Great. So I think uh, consumer loyalty is a difficult topic. It's not an easy topic uh, given the human nature, right? We, we want to try different things and uh, it's, it's a difficult emotion to hold, uh, basically. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, when we, uh, there is a deep loyalty towards a brand, we really enjoy it and we really love it, right? Uh, so um, I think uh, I'll start with a question where, uh, so uh, for me, some of the Tata brands, I'm very loyal, uh, right? So whenever I travel, I like to travel on Vistara or I like to stay in Taj. I mean, given similar hotels, you know, I would prefer a Taj, uh, basically. Uh, and we are in Taj. Uh, I love the food here. So would love to know one or two brands which you are very loyal to and why. So maybe you could, yeah. Yeah, for me, from a consumer durable point of view, if we ask that since we are born and been using, Colgate is a very, um, my favorite brand since my birth and if you take about financial sector I uh, as you said that Tata is a good brand but similarly my personal is a public sector brand any public sector brand is a very because the trust element is there so uh, I prefer a public sector brand yeah I think uh, more a new age customer now so I think uh, I have a lot of loyalty towards Zomato every time I want to order food I always have an option of Zomato versus Swiggy on the other front whenever I'm booking a cab I always have an option of Ola versus Uber and I've seen I've spent a lot of extra money on Uber at times but it's just it's just I don't know I mean for some reason it's just Uber yeah uh, I travel a lot uh, Uber is definitely a favorite uh, but the brand I do really like and I find myself keep going back to them is uh, Decathlon. Uh, while you know I'm not a big outdoor or a sports enthusiast or anything of that sort, but whenever I do need something in that sort of category, so to speak, uh, for some reason I always keep thinking of Decathlon, right? Uh, and I think you know kudos to them for building a brand around that category. That mind, uh, you know, brand recall is there. The experience in the stores, of course, as if you've been to those stores. Uh, the associates are very knowledgeable, right? You can try the product out. So lots of great things around it, so I really like them. Hi. For me, uh, one of the brands that I really look forward as a loyalty customer is Tanish. It's a jewelry brand. Uh, I think it has uh, the true essence of word loyalty has been taken into actual implementation across all touch points of Tanish. And as a customer, you are really all those key parameters that we look for, whether it is to do with service, transparency, communication, uh, whether it is to look from a perspective of it's a status symbol, uh, the kind of experience that you get when you are in Tanish showroom versus another showroom, the warmth of the Tata brand. So I think that's the reason I love the brand being a loyal. So, uh So, uh, one of the brands that I'm extremely loyal to, uh, but not for the reasons that probably would have asked the questions, so the brand is Shopperstock. Uh, and the reason I'm very loyal to it, the first reason is it was the first company I started working for. So, it starts from there. Uh, and therefore, it's very close to the heart. So, that's why I continue to be a very loyal customer of Shopperstock. But uh, if I have to answer your question in true spirit, is the brand uh, that I keep on going back to again and again is OnePlus in spite of a lot of things being said about Android versus Apple and this thing. So for me, it is not Android, it is for me, it's OnePlus. So over a period of time, consistently, I've been moving on to the newer models and then moving on to uh, the watch, the earbuds, and whatever OnePlus keeps on coming, including a OnePlus TV. So yes. that's... Great. Uh, so uh, what are the key characteristics of consumer loyalty 2.0, right? How you are using technology uh, in your business or in other, some other business you would have seen uh, would be great to understand the insight. So maybe we can start with you, Abhishek, on this question. Okay, so um, for us, and I'll talk about our industry, uh, life insurance, I will divide loyalty in two parts. First part is uh, loyalty because when a customer takes a product from us, the customer has contracted to be with us for next 15 years, 15 years, 20 years, 10 years, depending upon the policy term. If the customer decides not to pay us for those period of time, the transaction overall is not very profitable to me. 
So the first part of loyalty is when the customer is already have acquired a customer just to ensure that the customer keeps on paying the contracted uh, what was the contract for. So that is one part of the loyalty because customers keep on attracting in this parameter. So that's one part. The second part of loyalty is when you have acquired a customer but a customer and uh, research shows that whenever a customer buys a life insurance policy you end up buying six, seven life insurance policies throughout your life. And these six, seven policies are normally spread over three or four life insurers. So the second part of loyalty comes in that out of these six, seven policies, how much, what is the maximum share I can get. So these are the two parts of loyalty for us. Third part of loyalty, which, and I, that's a very unfortunate scenario you know, nobody talks about is, is the distributor loyalty. Because insurance is sold through distributors. Like customers have a choice of choosing one of the 25 life insurance companies, so has the distributor to sell any of these companies. It's very important that I as an organization retain my distributors because that they are the bread and butter. So these are the three dimensions of loyalty. For us, technology plays a huge role. It plays a huge role because data analytics and ML models actually tell me which customers are likely to attract, which customers are likely to abandon us even after taking or paying the first premium. So once we know about these cohort of customers, we take in extra efforts to retain them. Similarly, uh, normally insurance is bought whenever there is a change in the life stage. So depending on the data, we know when the life stage of the consumer is changing, that's the most right time to pitch the next product to the consumer. So that's where you go to the customer. Third part is even when the first sale is happening, you leave customer with something. So what we do is we tell customers that you have wealth protection needs, you, you have wealth enhancement needs, you have protection needs. Today that product you are taking with us will only take care of this need. This need will still remain unfulfilled. Just leave that thought with the customer. Or even the protection need that you have taken, it's not 100% fulfilled, it's probably 60% fulfilled. That 40% gap is still there. Leave that thought with the customer. So that next time when you are initiating a conversation with the customer, you don't start from scratch, you start from the where you left off earlier. So these are the things we use day in and day out to get loyalties from our customers and distributors. Sure. Bhavik, in your business. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you a little different perspective from loyalty from a segment uh, industry, which is the biggest financial and emotional decision that a human being can buy, which is his home. Yeah. And uh, you make go for an FMCG product which may you, you will be using every day versus you can look at luxury like cars which you can change after every 3-4 years or you could have something which is ultra luxury, a watch which is like a legacy. But there is always a way or a choice a customer takes to say, okay, I would like to move on or I have not liked my decision was wrong, I can go back. But when you buy a home, you don't take a decision for yourself but the entire family. Right? And in our business, uh, how we look at it is from a perspective of one customer who buys with us at Ashwin Shade, we, our analytics says that we have some 5 to 7 percent population of our customers who th three generations have bought with us. It shows three things. One, uh, prosperity for that customer, loyalty, third, uh, more trust and uh, faith in our brand. So using technology, coming back to is why it is so important in, in the segment that we are operating, which is real estate, is we use multiple cues to understand how the person is moving up in his life. For example, uh, let's take an example. Sridhar is a friend and he has moved from an X organization, has become the CEO of a Y organization, right? His income has changed, his status has changed, his lifestyle has changed, his head office now is in BKC. The first thing that analytic our software will do is identify and first congratulate Sridhar and say congratulations Sridhar for the next big leap in your life. Right time for you to look at a different lifestyle. Your office is in uh, BKC. A great product of ours is in Bandra West. Why would you like to look at it? Now when Sridhar has a de emotional connect because the brand recognizes him he is also connected because he now knows that yes, I am anyways, I should look for contemplating because his initial office was in Andheri, so he was staying somewhere far, travel is the key and time. Third, 
he is getting through his Facebook, we are aware that his son is getting married. Then it's a the right time for him to upgrade a bigger house. So we use technology at every single sphere of the person's touch point. Once he's a customer of ours or has come and visited our product, whether online or offline, we then track him and identify the cohorts that we could create out of which, and based on that, intelligently propose a product. For example, he's not looking for himself, but as he's an investor, his roots are from Bangalore, and we are coming up in Bangalore as a farmhouse project. We would, he would be the first one to know. That you know, we are coming up, would you be interested? Being part of the inner circle, we would like to do a personalized presentation to you. So our technology is evolving with the customer the way he is today, touch base. We realized initially that 60% of our consumers were basically the ones who were using laptop. So we created our design or conversation related to those. But in the recent, uh, last year when we did our whole analysis, 93% people are using mobile handset. So our entire communication, our touch and feel, our experience, the touch points to him shifted from an X to completely to mobile. So those are the technological stuff that we are using with Salesforce, some of the AI analytics to predict a customer that based on his last five years pattern, when can he buy or we should prove him for the next buy is also something that we work around. Yeah, thanks. So first of all, Bhavik, I hope all your uh, predictions come true that I become a CEO soon. <laughs> uh, no, thanks for that. Um, and you know, I think that's a great segue and uh, I work for a technology company, Salesforce. We obviously, you know, we are a B2B company, right? So loyalty again, you know, from our perspective, when we are dealing with our own customers and, you know, uh, Ashwin Shade Group is a, is a fantastic customer of ours. He just, you know, talked about us a little bit. Um, one thing is, of course, you know, we have to continuously innovate on the product, right? In fact, just when we were sitting in the lounge, he was talking about what are we doing in the generative AI space, right? Uh, and, and that's a often asked question, you know? Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that we have to continuously innovate so that we make the life of our customers, you know, easier, better, so that they're able to reach to their, you know, consumers. Uh, in, in, you know, his case, you know, the home buyers and so forth, right? So that is one way of ensuring that at least, you know, the product that they've invested in is something that, you know, continues to deliver value, you know, over time, right? It's not something that is going to just sit on the shelf and, you know, nobody's using it, right? So that's a very basic level of thing that is a table stakes for us. The other aspects are, of course, you know, ensuring that he also realizes, you know, value from it. Right, um, and value realization is something that has become more and more important to ensuring you know loyalty because you know everybody is operating in a very uh, tough economic you know environment I would say, and you really have to stretch that you know rupee to the last mile and even beyond. So everybody is uh, is uh, getting asked those questions, right? Where is my investment going? What is the ROI on this? And how am I you know gaining benefit out of this? And then they are looking for actually black and white numbers. So it might not seem very intuitive that how is this related to loyalty, but I can tell you that, you know, nine out of 10 conversations that I have with my customers, if they, if we are able to help them, you know, with the business case and help them understand the ROI on the, on that investment that they made, they're very likely to renew with Salesforce, you know, in the following year and so on and so forth, right? So to me, that again is a, is a sign of loyalty. I would probably just stop with those two. There are a lot of other reasons. But also at the same time, you know, from a B2C perspective, it is also constantly keeping in touch with the trends and the, the pulse of what consumers are doing. Uh, again, you know, it varies by industry, whether it's retail or consumer goods or, you know, banking and so on and so forth. So it really requires you to have a pulse on the ground, understand market trends. Of course, we look at what competitors are doing and, you know, ensure that the latest in technology that has to offer is something that we are able to infuse in the product uh, that ultimately helps you to deliver a better experience, personalize that, you know, uh, ensure that, you know, you're getting a lot more value out of the data insights that you're gathering. I think that's what ultimately is the secret sauce to ensuring, um, you know, loyal customers. I don't think there's one formula that works for everybody, but our job is to simply to make sure that the technology is something that is benefiting our uh, customers. Thanks. 
Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll put the answer in two parts, right? The first part is more to do with B2C of what we do as to our, like what we help with our customers and what we've seen across, right? I think the biggest part of uh, consumer loyalty in B2C companies is probably to do with two factors. The first one is building on aspiration. I mean, I'll just take an example of something like a Nike. I mean, people are loyal back and back again to Nike because once you have worn a Nike, people don't want to be seen again in a shoes lower than that, basically. So that's the first part. The second part is to build it on a on, on the front of convenience in that case. Now, when I say convenience, it, it's as simple as you have a Paytm versus a, versus a phone pay versus a Google Pay for that matter. People have found their own convenience in different apps. Like today, for example, for me, even if I close my eyes, I open a Paytm, I can scan a QR code and pay to someone without even seeing the screen for that matter today. So either it's on the brand front or it's on the convenience front, majorly our customer loyalty in B2C companies are built up. At least for all the new age customers that are coming up, honestly, See, earlier what used to happen is the loyalty used to be built on the group brand. Like we all are saying here that we are great loyalists of Tata as a company. Now any product that Tata will bring in, our loyalty from day zero will start from 100% and only if the brand screws up really bad, it will go down from there. But I think the new age way of, like the new age trend of how this is built is, day zero that is zero. Like, like on, on day one, that loyalty is zero actually. And now brands have to build it upwards, basically. And I think that's been a big shift because the amount of consumerism that's happening across the country today, it's a Western trend that's coming out in India, that, that will always be there because now there's an option, there's a choice of many that's coming in, right? Uh, when it comes to B2B companies particularly, especially in how we look at consumer loyalty, and I think it's very close to what Sridhar also mentioned for Salesforce, right? See, honestly, we provide uh, an entire content stack to our customers, right? No customer would ever want to change their content stack unless we screw up really, really bad. Because there's so much amount of context, so much amount of data that we already have with the customer. I think the same is for Salesforce as well. I mean, it's difficult to move to a different stack than to remove us in that case. And, and over a period of time, you ought to build that. But I'll tell you what, there's something that's also called as customer delight that you need to offer to the customer in order to make them more loyalist for you. That is to do more with how do you consult the customer. Like we've seen in the most of the cases where B2B product companies have come up, right? They're very, very transactional. I mean, when you have bought it, after that a customer success manager is just there for you when you need them. And it's more support than success. And there's a vast difference in how B2B companies operate. I'm pretty sure people in the room have had used one or two B2B products particularly. That support versus success is the entire key of how loyalists are built through. We've realized for the longest time, we never called our customers unless they had a problem. As soon as we started calling them, upsell, cross-sell, apne ap ho gaya. So we've, we've seen that loyalists because the demand is infinite at the customer's end. The only, the only ways is that person considering me versus someone else. I think one big factor we have changed in the way we run our business in B2B companies is meeting people face to face. Do they think of pepper when they are not thinking of content? Do they respect in, uh, us as individuals versus respecting us as a company, particularly? I think these are all smaller factors which are very personal relationships. We have, we have realized either it's a B2B company, but we, either, we are actually selling it to an individual. It's, it's, it's probably the CMO or the CDO or the chief content officer's consideration that the work is either coming to me or going to someone else. So I think that's how I put in uh, customer loyalty in B2B and B2C overall in that case. So. Uh, customer loyalty and retention is uh, fundamental for any brand. Uh, I'll just go back uh, during my maybe 30 years back how customer loyalty used to be. Uh, just an example, I remember during my maybe 10 year old, I was 10 year old, I used to go with my mother to a Kirana shop where every month we used to buy the grocery. That those times there was not multiple grocery shop and only to one grocery shop we used to go. And every time we buy the grocery for the month, he used to give some okay, sugar candy, something small, four, four or five. So it so happened that I, I really remember that kind of a gratification the Kirana store was giving because that every there was a motivation for us to go to that shop again and again because he is just giving that and he's I'm I'm that kind I was an influencer kind of a person. In, in, uh, in motivating my mother to why not we go to the shop to buy grocery. So that was customer loyalty then. So why? Because there was only one point of sale during that time. But right now, the point of sale 
and the customer touch points have increased multifold and with digital and communication being extensively distributed, it's not one place where the brands need to contact or connect with the customer. There are multiple channels in which the uh, touch base is there and accordingly the uh, brands are positioning their customer retention or loyalty or whatever. Second is the segmentation. Segmentation, if you see from a bank's perspective, we are a, a public sector bank, we are around 15 crore customers, of which I can say 30% or less than 28 years old, 30%. And we also have nearly 15% who are 60 years and above. So one shoe fits all. Uh, loyalty program wouldn't work here in, in our case. So we need to really understand what segment of customers we are dealing with and what kind of a loyalty or retention we are going to bring in that for that segment and that's where the technology has really played a very strong role in identifying the different segments and positioning the suitable products so for example the IIT guy will be more interested in getting a Spotify subscription but my senior citizen will not know what is Spotify I need to really explain I can't send them a Spotify subscription that you increase your balance and we'll send you a subscription so certainly segmentation is another very significant element which is playing a very uh, a critical role in this uh, loyalty program in the second phase now third thing is previously in banking if you want to say some consumer uh, characteristic it's only the balance which used to determine. He is having 10, 10 lakh balance, he is having 50 lakh balance, he is having 1,000 1, rupees balance. The balance used to be the characteristic. But with digital going extensively and cash literally out, we all have, in from the finance sector, we have a lot of transactional behavior of the customer. So today, I can see that which customer is not only having balance, but where he is actually spending, what are his brand affinity, what are his product affinities, so that I can really uh, offer the right kind of loyalty or reach, uh, reach, reach to the right customer with the right product, and technology is really playing a strong role here again. Third thing, uh, sorry, I think the fourth point I wanted to say is that earlier it was used to be gratification like customer loyalty and uh, retention was always used to be gratification buy one get one free use your uh, 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 shop with us and get some offer or something now it's uh, more not more more it's going to be gratification it's kind of expectation from the customer it's not that what you give i want it's what i want you i expect the brand to give so there's a lot of uh, 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 AI, the technology, the consumer behavior, understanding, a lot of things go into play and lit literally determining that what exactly the consumer wants from that particular brand and which type of customer what he wants from the brand. So these uh, 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 cohorts or these kind of uh, consumer behavior is very strongly supported by the latest technology or digital and also the consumer awareness on this is playing a lot of uh, role in this so uh, I think that uh, these were the fundamentals of uh, customer loyalty which uh, brands should look at going forward particularly in financial sector great I think sugar candy is a great technology as well to you know uh, obviously uh, you know I have sweet memories of going to a particular shop and so I really resonated with that example <laughs> And, uh, you know, you know uh, Santhil, you talked about segmentation. So, uh, you know, probably going deeper into that, personalization obviously can help, right? Uh, and we are now in an era where there is data, there is technology, there's a lot of data analytics as well. So, uh, in your business, uh, you know, what role does data analytics play? You have talked about it a bit, but if you can elaborate it in more detail, that will be fantastic. Yeah, data analytics play a very critical role. As I said, see, I'll tell you, um, uh, for example, uh, the number of uh, customers is very high and transactions, what particularly financial transactions, because digital has really uh, increased the number of transactions. Data analytics play a very critical role in identifying the consumer behavior particularly. And also, uh, uh, the, the, what do you call, uh, uh, the uh, after segmentation, from the from segmentation then we come to transactional behavior then consumer behavior and then 
their positioning of the products to them. So in, in our, our field, data analytics play a very, very strong role. Great. Uh, Kishan, in your business uh, or any other example? Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you about one this one of these companies called as Notion. How many of you have heard of Notion? Basically, yeah. It's one of my favorite products, basically, the way I use it. It's almost, I, I use it almost, like I open a Notion board almost four to five times a day. Uh, or you're writing on Notion board, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, someone at Notion told me one thing, right? And I think that's always stuck with me. The process of consumer loyalty or a post-sales behavior of a customer doesn't start after it's a customer. It starts when it was a prospect, basically. And I think a lot of times when we do these segmentation, data analytic cohorts, we always put it as sales and post-sales and that's because the nature of the organizations, the way we are structured, all of us, is that one person owns it from demand generation to lead, the other person owns it from lead to customer, the third person owns it from customer to a loyal customer, the fourth owns it from a loyal customer to an advocate, basically. Because the nature of these four things are different, after a point in time in larger organization, they all start operating in silos, basically. The biggest, and, and the, the right use of data analytics, see, hyper-personalization is something we all know of it. I mean, there's no one in the room I don't think would not know of hyper-personalization. But I think hyper-personalization is beyond the fact by using their first name and their account number and all of these things. I think that's, that's done and dusted. It's, it's almost, it's a 2020 thing that's there, right? Today, I'll tell you, hyper-personalization actually should start with a customer when the demand is generated. Because since then, that customer loyalty process starts right from there itself. I'll just give you a small example. I was just seeing the Bajaj FinServe website recently. The way the website is seen to me is very different from what it would be seen to you or you in that case. And it's, it's probably because whatever amount of data they have today, the way they have segmented their cohorts, if not the exact individual, but the way I have segmented the cohorts, my needs are put in extremely differently than yours and yours. In fact, our navigation bars are very different altogether. I mean, that's a, that's a good level of hyper-personalization I've seen at the first level, basically. So what I, what I mean by this is use data analytics, cohort segmenting. I think there are a ton of tools from your clever taps of the world to more engages of the world to web engages of the world. There, there are tons of tools, honestly. There's Salesforce, there's Adobe, there's, there's, there's a ton of tools already that exist. But the way you're using it to hyper-personalize information is critical. The second part I would say is Hyper-personalization on emailers is also old. A lot of players, when they say we have personalized information and given that's the only channel we have as a medium, I've seen that, that brands are moving ahead of that. Probably more shorter formats of communication, hyper-personalization, uh, with some use of generative AI, of course, in that case, I'm pretty sure you all have seen some of the campaigns of a celebrity coming and taking your first names and probably a Shah Rukh Khan Mondelez campaign that came up, right? I mean, those are all fine, but in fact, Beyond first name and last name, even if you are giving the customer the information that they want. And that's what I call as unassisted sales, basically. Like you're selling to the customer without taking their first name, but what they're exactly wanting would be the ideal case utilization is this. So the key takeaway from what I wanted to say was just hyper-personalization using data analytics on personal information of a customer is not enough. Even if that's not there, that's okay. There are brands who are doing much greater who are not doing this job. But actually giving sales to a customer or actually telling them what they are looking for is more critical and important. So the cohortization has to happen as per needs and not as per information or the psychography and demography only of a consumer. So that's, that's the key takeaway I wanted to mention. Yeah, uh, some great points uh, being made here. And, uh, you know, again, from my perspective, um, maybe, you know, I'm already a convert. But I believe that you know every company is going to be a technology company, right? In, in some way or the other, it doesn't matter whether you're making cookies or biscuits or making cement or selling software. At the end of the day, you are going to be you know so dependent on technology to run your you know business on a day-to-day -day basis, right? But I think at the heart of it is again what has been touched upon already is data, and you know we've all heard the statements about data as a new oil, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? And I think you know we are really seeing that you know being played out in the market every single day, right? And especially with the hype around generative AI. And again, of course, you know I say it hype because I think we are still in a very nascent stage. Uh, there's a long way to go, but obviously the initial results are very promising, and companies are investing in it because they they feel that this can deliver real results. But I think what they're also finding out very quickly is that. 
you know, unless that data foundation is there, your generative AI can only go so far, right? So one of the fundamental things that we are doing for our own purpose within Salesforce is to really emphasize the collection of data and collecting it at a very granular level and making sense out of it is something that, again, you know, we have a booth outside. Please stop by, you know, we'll be able to tell you more about it. Is this, you know, product called Data Cloud, right? And at the end of the day, what it really means is a, is a way for you to store customer data from across the entire enterprise, all your interactions, whether it's on the web or store, point of sale, et cetera, et cetera, social media, everything comes into that. We are able to harmonize it, you know, create a, a very rich profile or a 360 degree view of the customer, as we like to say. And once that foundation is created, you can do a lot of things with it, right? Including segmentation, which hopefully leads to hyper-personalization, uh, use it for customer service, and, and simply understand what our customers are looking for, and that can feed back into your product innovation and so on and so forth, right? So there is enormous value in it. Um, but at the end of the day, if you don't get that basic stuff right, then a lot of the you know, upstream stuff will not make a lot of sense, and I think your investments will not go you know, very far. So uh, again, you know, just emphasizing that point. Yeah, thanks. So for <clears throat> importantly for us, uh, when we look at data and we look at tech, uh, uh, it's like for us, it's like in a dark tunnel array of light, which is basically for us, and it gives us a direction. I'll give you the things that we are using data and how it is important is uh, we are trying to now look at version two from the loyalty because the basic personalization call <coughs> invites and all happen. So we are trying to now understand a little more psychographic personality per understanding of a consumer. For example, why a customer is loyal to a brand? What is brand? Is basically not just product. That's one. Second, we try to look, uh, basis the look alike that we have created through tech, we start understanding what is his aspiration. What is he looking in the society at larger? So we link his LinkedIn, we link his Facebook meta, we link his Instagram, we also look at other forums, for example, again Sridhar, right? A guy is extremely professional in, in his corporate life, but he is a very nature-loving person. He likes to be associated with brands which are environmental friendly. Uh, some, he is associated with those brands which give back to society. So am I that brand which will allow him to co constantly not only be loyal but become an advocate for me? Second, we also look at stages of people's aspiration. I'll give you an example. Uh, we were talking to one customer who has bought a penthouse with us, a 30 crore product. And we're trying to understand his aspiration, his thought. He says, Bhavi, I want to be seen with certain kind of people. I don't want to be seen with certain kind of people who are not my type which means brand is also in that segment. By taking our brand, is his status going up? Is he seen that he is with the who's who of the society or he is seen with someone who is just going to arrive? So those kind of tech data is extremely important for us to take the loyalty version to next level where we are able to understand the reasons behind why a customer buys a product. And frankly, when I was talking to one of the guy, other customer, he said, it's not just because of features and advantages. Because a lot of products have, I'll give you an example, Apple. The camera quality is in another brand, which is half the cost, is better than that. But still a customer who wants to pay premium and want to be with Apple is not just because of the product. But he wants to get associated in a certain segment where the people say, oh, this guy has an Apple. Okay, let me have a perception. If I see a guy coming out of Maybach, I will create a perception imagery about that customer in my mind. If he is the sports, he comes out from a sports car. So those are the things that we take from tech and data, and then we implement back in our business to come back on the loyalty front. Uh, so I think enough has been said about tech, data, analytics, and this was. So let me give you a very basic view. Um, Ultimately, we all are humans selling our products to humans. That's the base. Unfortunately, what has happened? Unfortunately, that because of the so much of data overlay, these models, analytics, 
somehow I feel we keep on forgetting that basic thing that we are humans selling to humans. And we have actually forgotten what these interactions between two humans can create wonders. Tech can always be an enabler, tech can always be the backbone, but tech cannot be everything. And that we have to take in mind. We have to take in. Let me just give a very simple example. Uh, I was in um, a town called Kolapur day before yesterday. And uh, since I was visiting Kolapur, we have a branch over there. I also tried to look at some data with us about Kolapur customers and this thing. And from the data, data I just realized that on that day, we had approved a claim for a customer. That means customer had passed away and we had approved a claim for the customer's family. That claim was going to be credited into account on the day I was visiting Kolapur. That happened by chance. So I thought uh, I should pay a curtsy visit to this customer. Just a curtsy visit, thanking, be with the family at difficult time and just thanking them and just ask that did they face any problems when they were the family was going through the claim process and anything that was my intention i went along with our the local branch leadership team i went and visited the customer's family what we realized over there that customer was staying in one of the most upmarket location of kolapur the customer was a well renowned ca who had passed away his uh, son was now running the ca firm he used to work along with his father and they had very influential, very good kind clientele. This being a CA, and when I spoke to him, he told me that when my father was taking this policy, I was telling him, kya zarot hai? Kya zarot hai? Aap kyun faltu mein paise dal rahe ho? It's not required. But then when I realized that for past three years, my father had just paid close to two lakh rupees and we are giving him and he has got 60 lakh rupees credited into his account. He said, Mere papa nahi hai. Par ye amount or the SMS aaya na, ye mujhe papa ki yaad dilata raha ki papa ne apne responsibility kitne achche se nebhai thi. And I have now become a proponent of life, that's customer's words, I have now become the proponent of life insurance. I will offer life insurance to all my clients and I would like to associate with you <coughs> so that I can offer your product to my customers because I have seen, gone through that entire process. The point I'm trying to make over here is, you know, all being said, done, data, technology and this thing, ultimately we should never forget is humans selling to humans, humans dealing with humans. So we should endeavor to build the data layers, the technology layers, the analytics layers around this part not try to actually replace one with another. That should not be the intention. Unfortunately, we seem to be going in the direction where tech is everything, impersonal interactions are everything, and uh, the human touch is going out. Yeah, completely agree. I think, uh, you know, with all the development in AI, uh, obviously humans are developing AI, right? So, it, you know, hum human factor is the most critical factor. Um, so uh, I think you know we have uh, we are probably last ten minutes. So I will combine two questions in one. So one is you know um, uh, someone talked about the environmental consciousness as well, which was I think a very relevant point. So you know how are you looking at that as a factor, and that that also relates to uh, you know what uh, we as a uh, you know species are doing for sustainability, uh, right, and taking care of what we have created here, uh, and. Uh, with that, uh, you know, how can brands move beyond transactional to more emotional connections, which is where, you know, again, that people-to-people -people interactions play a very, very important role as well. So, two points, environmental consciousness and uh, emotional connections. I'll take that. Um, rightly said that uh, more than the product or service or experience, now leadership brands are more focusing on uh, common cause or for the global good. So, in, in, for example, in, even in our bank, Bank of Baroda, recently we have introduced a product called Green Deposit. The deposit, money raised from the deposit will be uh, used for financing uh, green initiative projects, which RBA has mentioned, what all the categories. So, this, this, this is nothing to do with the, the money is the money, the interest rate is the interest rate. 
the product is totally different. But for what cost it's going to uh, be uh, utilized. So that makes the difference and certainly the, the, the affinity to the brand will make a strong impact by, uh, we, are, we are strongly hopeful that this, this product will uh, certainly take a, a, a bring a lot of affinity to our brand. And similarly, some time back also we were doing uh, initiative like when you take a car loan or a home loan, we plant a tree uh, for each car and home loan. And there are a lot of uh, uh, movement or awareness happening in this direction and most of the top brands now are moving into not just product sale or not just giving the customer the best experience but moving forward taking a conscious call on uh, how we are going to really uh, support the future in terms of uh, bringing such kind of a green initiatives and other things so that's from my side yeah so uh I have, a, I have a very different take on it and I'm wanting to be very honest in this case, right? Uh, see, this entire moving towards brands for a purpose kind of a thing is a, is a three, four year old phenomena that has come up, right? I think the recent Viacom report that had come in, people in the age bracket of 18 to 30, basically, would prefer brands uh, which have more purpose in that case. Like, for example, I would prefer getting a holy color from a brand who is actually recycling the flowers from hotels altogether. But I want to be very brutally honest in this case. This is only happening in the upper, say, 10-15% phenomena. That's it. India as a market, we are almost, almost 120 crore people now. I don't think, apart from the top 8-10% to people, the bottom layer of people still focus on purpose more. They focus on price the more. And as a market, we are still educating over there. See, this is a very, very Western culture phenomena that has come in. I've spent a lot of time in the West and I can tell you for sure, people over there are very concerned about what's the fabric of my cloth. I am going to wear a Birkenstock because, oh, that's going to be the, the core of the bark of the tree that I'm using. India, mein, that's... You Bombay to South Bombay, chale jao, probably you will get to see it in in mass market, there is a very long tail in India. Like it's the longest tail in the world of people that exist. And I don't think that purpose thing has come over there. Unless the brand is themselves telling that you account, we will put a jar, that is fine. That brand is doing it But the consumer is choosing that, giving an extra premium because of that. I don't think that has happened. And I want to be brutally honest in this case, with all the fanciness around it, this is the truth today that's happening. But yes, that upper segment of brands that exist, absolutely. I'll give an example. Recently, there's a company called as Fool, who's come up with this entire recycling of flowers. Uh, I was uh, speaking to the people at Hotel Leela, Leela Group. They have initiated like six different or big initiatives overall, where they are even using the bags being made by some Jodhpur Mahila Guru Udyog in that case. They're taking these initiatives. But I have personally just seen that the top one person. But I think the brands are doing a phenomenal job by not asking the customers for a premium, but still kind of giving back to the society with what brands like uh, Bank of Baroda, Every uh, lot of financial services companies doing it. I think that is very phenomenal because brands have a leverage to do that and they are idly doing it. Niche wale mein, I would say it's more convenient. So that's that. Yeah, but, but I agree with that yeah. point. But the other side of it is that you said that still we got a long way to go. I agree. But if you take the younger generation segment, if you take India is like less than 30, 50 percent of the population is less than 30 years. The younger population is more wanting to. Uh, uh, attach themselves to not just the product and more into a, a social purpose or cause. Maybe we are far away in India, but the, the population, if you see in India, is that uh, this, this uh, generation is looking forward for that kind of uh, attachment to brands. That's a very scientific study also has been done on that. Let's take the call. Uh, yeah, and, and I'll just make a quick comment. I think uh, consumers in India are very, very smart. Right. If a brand is trying to associate and that's a, you know, it's not authentic, then they don't like it. But otherwise, I think, you know, Indians are in general, I would say, very environmental conscious all across. Meaning, and in all, it's not just, you know, I've, I've been in villages and vill villagers are very uh, sentimental about their trees and stuff like that. Right. So I think uh, as a whole, we, we love our environment and we want to protect our environment, but we want to feel authentic uh, yeah. I think uh, authentic is a great word I think you know in this context and again from from my perspective and from my employer's perspective um, I think you know it's also important to 
establish that emotional connection. Even though we are a software company, I think it's important because at the end of the day, the buyers are still, you know, human beings, right? Not a no-name corporation that buys software <laughs> automatically or robotically. So we do have to appeal to that human being. Uh, that human being, ultimately, they have, you know, their own set of beliefs, values, etc. And we have ours, and I think it's ultimately about aligning our values to, you know, that uh, set of values that exists out there, right? And I think you have to be authentic, and I think you have to do it, you know, in a very consistent manner over and over again, right? Uh, like he said, I think a lot of companies have picked up on this uh, fad or trend, but hopefully it stays. And we definitely believe that, you know, the, the real business of any business is to bring about change in the society and the communities that we live and serve. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully I can say I've been with, uh, you know, Salesforce for the last seven years. Uh, I see that they're very, you know, religious about it in, in, in that sense. Uh, uh, we, we have things like, you know, giving back to the community. We have uh, 56 hours of paid leave to actually go to volunteer work. Uh, you know, I can go to an orphanage or a blind school, spend eight hours. And that eight hours, you know, I don't have to take time off, right? The company actually pays me for that. So there are lots of things I think companies can do, uh, but you have to figure out what is right for you, right? And not simply follow a trend, you know, blindly. I agree. Uh, see, uh, our fundamental belief at Ashwin Shit as a brand is that, you know, you can't cater to everyone, yeah. okay? Brands are basically magnets which attract certain kind of people who have a certain kind of a value and the ecosystem that they would like to be associated with. People like to be associated with people who have a viewpoint. So is, if as a brand you have a viewpoint that you would like to give back to society, that's a viewpoint and the certain kind of set will like to know more about you. If you are a transactional brand, there are a lot of people in the market who only look at price. And they'll say, okay, I'll join hands with you. Emotionally, what I see is that if you think that this is the way you want to go, be true to it throughout the journey and don't have a uh, cut short corner where you are showing the reflecting your other side of it which is a fad and which is not a reality uh, emotionally when you are having a connect with the consumer on this parameter which is just sustainability so when you're saying implement in the projects like for example in our projects we have been committed by the chairman that for in the next five years, 2,000 crore of worth investment we are going to do only in eco-friendly projects. Our, we have redesigned our entire design team who is now specializing with green. All our projects has to be LEED certified. All our projects should have solar panel. All our projects should have electronic vehicle charging stations. Yeah, it's a cost. But we have identified that when, what rightly said by him, that if you ask a customer a premium, then you're not doing actually that. So what we have done, we have re-engineered our model of construction where we have absorbed that cost and not charging the customer high. Then it becomes a purpose. Like in today, our organization, everything is paperless. We have realized that yes, every single day for every reports, there is the print and the team member keeps coming back to us. So we have done that. Another thing that I think is very important from a perspective of larger uh, industry, as a brand, when you are touching to that consumer on an emotional perspective, don't be true for a certain time, but keep on graduating and increasing in that level. Rightly said that today, the average age of India is 29, as for McKinsey, which means this is the population who will become 60 in the next 30, 40 years. If you don't have a viewpoint, they don't connect. And that's the reason I think emotionally having a point of view and then standing true to it will make the difference in the loyalty of the brand. Okay, uh, I'll quickly wrap up, but um, whatever I'm going to say, there is at least one person in the room who knows what I'm going to talk about. Uh, we actually, uh, as an organization, uh, since we are into life insurance, we have a purpose. Purpose is protect dreams and aspirations. That's what we as a company do. But we were thinking that uh, what, how can our customers help protect dreams and aspirations of other people? So we uh, realized there's a huge problem in India, and that problem is uh, a lack of organ donation. Five years back, Gaurav, it was five years back, right? Yeah, the reason I'm saying person who is Gaurav, although he's part of uh, Poonawala group now, uh, me and he worked together when he was part of Edelweiss. Uh, we started uh, organ donation campaign five years back. Uh, we have done a lot of activities to promote the case of organ donation. I'll not talk too much about it. Uh, three months back, 
three months back, one of our customers' families, not customers, one of the families contacted us and informed us that uh, <clears throat> their 25-year-old uh, son had got in touch, had come in contact with one of the awareness campaigns that we were running for organ donation. And he had signed up to become an organ donor through our program. Uh, unfortunately, this person met with an accident. But because he had signed up for an organ donor program and he had actually told his family that he wanted his organs to be donated when he was not there, his organs were harvested and it was donated and five people, five different people got a new lease of life only because that person had signed up for that campaign and decided to go through it. So, um, you know, when you hear these kind of things, it's very sad for that particular family, but I actually admire and salute the courage of that family to go ahead with that decision. It's when you see these kind of incidents happening, you realize that, uh, you know, Kailog Asa Bolte hai ki, all these CSR things and good for society, these are all lip service, but when these things happen, you really realize that uh, all the investments that you did, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about thinking, I'm talking about time, I'm talking about efforts, all that you do has been really worth it and extremely satisfying to yourself. Uh, so, um, that is what I wanted to add to your question. Thanks. This was really amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much.